Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of From the Helm. I'm Kelly. And I'm Lisa. And today we are out here in beautiful Tampa Bay. And uh, Lisa, we have a special guest with we us today. We do. We actually have somebody literally from the helm. May I introduce to you Captain Keith? You hey, guys everybody. might know him from some of his boating safety videos. So what we're going to do here today is go through your spring checklist of what you need to do to make sure you're boating ready this summer. And if you guys have any questions, any questions at all for Captain Keith or ourselves, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments section and we'll uh, we'll check out the questions and get them answered for you. So hope everybody's having a great day, great week, and hopefully it's a little warmer up there in the north. So <laughs> let's get started. So Keith, tell us what boat we're on to start off. This is uh, Boston Whalers 23 Vantage. Uh, we just actually was one of the two boats we were running in the Women on Water class which uh, I noticed you guys put a little teaser feet up there and said Captain Keith and his natural element. We did. <laughs> we did. Uh -uh. This is the this natural element. This is your natural right element. Here. That's We're going to sure. do a live from the helm. We're going to do a live from the helm, right? That's okay. the only Perfect. way to do it, right? So All this, right. this is where I'm comfortable at, right here. Cool. So Keith, tell us a little bit about, so we're going to start off with, uh, before we even get to the water, I know we're already on the water, but for those who are, you know, trying to get to the water, a lot of them trailer their boats to the water. What are some of the things that people need to think about when, when starting the se season uh, in, in trailering their boat? So down here in Florida, I mean, we're pretty much, you know, 12 months out of the year. We're going all the time. Yep. But, you know, those of you guys up north, the boats might have been sitting for a while in a storage bin or outside somewhere. Um, check the wheel bearing grease. Go through and, you know, right. make sure the bearings are... are are good. Um, if you're going to trailer the boat any kind of distance, have a spare tire. Mm -hmm. Check the air pressure in all your tires. Um, and then also, you know, check for dry rot. You know, you don't want to be going down the road and then, you know, you got you got issues and then uh, it's just easier to handle before, you know, that situation happens. For sure. For Absolutely. sure. And uh, so you get there, first things first, you know, once you get it on the docks, you got to check the lines. So tell us a little bit about the lines and how to check and see if your lines are good to go. I mean, what, what's well, important there? Well, once again, you know, I mean, if it's been, the boat's been sitting somewhere, you know, maybe your lines have been in a, in a storage bin or something, and maybe there was moisture in there or water, you know, they might be moldy, you know, might, they might have dry rotted out as well. You know, if they're frayed, you know, it's not the time to be out on the water. You're trying to tie up to a dock or get some out. Make sure they're coiled up nice, right? Yep. So you can actually get the line on the cleat when you need to. Just kind of take the time, come up with a punch list of sorts, sure. and just kind of go through everything you can. But uh, just make sure your lines are in good good order. And that and that's good information for everybody. Having a checklist before you get out on the water, or even before you're about to go out for a day on the water, is always a really important thing to have and, and keeps you organized. Cool. So what else? Also, uh, so we got lines. Let's talk about fenders too. Okay. Tell us a little yes. bit about fenders. Same, same, same type thing with the fenders. Other than just uh, like, like with the tires, make sure they're inflated. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure they're clean. If they've laid somewhere and they've got you know salt on them or they're dirty or whatnot, and then the next thing you know, we've got a painted hull, and then you know that dirty fenders in there rubbing, and now you've got to paint the hull, hull side of your oh. boat, or fix the gel coat, or or anything like that. So, you know, just. Clean ship's a happy ship, right? Yeah. So it just kind of goes with the, whole, with the whole thing. So I have a question about fender etiquette, because I see sometimes that people just throw them on the dock or, um, you know, have them hanging off the side of their boat. Is there a yeah. boating know-how, like fender etiquette? Well, yeah, I mean, you're going to have fenders, I mean fenders, you'll have cleats along the side, like in this case. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, you can take it and tie it off the cleat. We can take it and we can tie it off to this the hard top here. But then pretty much you're going to have your fender to where it's depending on the dock. Right. Right. It's just a spacer between your, your dock and the boat. So, but I don't, you don't want to have them laying down in the water and all that right. stuff, especially if it's a floating dock. So sure. do it to where they're staying up. Salt water here, if you leave your boat for a while and that fender's touching the water, then you're going to have barnacles and slime and all that stuff. Then you're throwing your fenders away. Yep. Okay. You know, fresh water, it's going to be a little bit, you know, a little bit. Less maintenance, a little yeah. bit easier for you guys. It's a little bit nicer for those uh, people in the lakes, that's for sure. Right. Nice. All right, so that's a little bit on the exterior of the boat. Now, I mean, there's a lot of electronics that are going on here. When you first get on your boat in the spring, I mean, you've got to probably check this from head to toe, right? right. To make sure everything's working. You've got charts. You've got, you know, a ton of electronics. Um, what's, like, a, a great way to go about just kind of making sure everything's working well, boat. I mean, if you're using regular paper charts, make sure you've got the most current chart available to you, whether it's on a lake or a river or out here in the Gulf or the Atlantic. Yep. Um, so this whaler doesn't have a chart plotter in here yet. 
So whether you wanted to go Raymarine, Garmin, Simrad, Lowrance, your choice, you're going to have a, an option to put a chart card in there. Mm -hmm. And then say it's an avionics card, right? You can keep updating that Navionics chip for the freshest data so that if sandbars move or things change or whatever, sure. you're constantly updating that or no wake zones or, or where things go. So it's kind of good, you know, periodically take the chip out and plug it into your computer and, and update it through their website. Well, okay, wait, time out. Did you just say sandbars move? Sandbars move. Sandbars A move. A lot. A lot. Okay. There's there are passes south of here, right? Yep. I mean, down by uh, let's say New Pass, Big Sarasota Pass. The Coast Guard's actually shut some of those off. They've taken the channel markers out because they can't keep up with the shoaling sands. So, okay. So then it's local knowledge. Yep. And then again, once you if you do it with your let's say your chart plotter with your Navionics and you're laying down your track, you eke your way out. Well, then you've got a trail to come back, and you can kind of keep See working where, it. Okay. So, uh, you know. That's interesting. And so it's, you can't actually always rely on, you know, you gotta got to pay attention. Use your eyes, just because a channel marker's sitting there. Yeah. You know, you got to be able to see the deep cut, you know, through there. Well, and that tells you a lot of people get so absorbed with the electronics and saying, well, you know, this is my car, it's going to, I'm going to back up and do all this stuff. But a lot of times you just have to take the moment and just look for yourself. It's, right? it's not a video game. I mean, I, I know some people, probably some people of this company that <laughs> will go and drive the boat on there. Just like it's a thing. You can't do that. You got to look out. Sure. See what's going on. So that's. That's the helm. What are some of the other things around a boat that people want to check and just make sure that everything's in working order before heading out on the water? So, before you go out, right? I mean, the best, say the, in this case, we're talking about the boat's been sitting for a while. Yep. Right. Maybe plug your battery in, put it into a, a battery charger, right? Trickle charger, make sure your battery's up. If it's a water cell battery, add water to it, check the water levels in there. Okay. Um, fire it up at the house before you go to the ramp. You know, yeah. stick the hose on there, stick some flushers on there, come up here, crank the key, make sure she pops off. Yep. Last thing you want to do, it's been six months since you've been <laughs> the boat ramp, you show up, don't be that guy. You don't be that guy. You go to the boat ramp Saturday morning, there's a bunch of people waiting, you're sitting there and you launch the boat and then it won't start and everybody's backing up behind you. Yep. So just, you know, think ahead and, and uh, prepare yourself. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people get really eager to get out on the water that they forget to, to check things before they even leave. Yep. Uh, the other thing you want to do is look in your bilge. So, okay. one, before you go, check it out. So yep. make sure it's clean and dry and all that stuff. You put the boat in the water, go ahead. So if it's a stern drive, it's an I.O., you're going to open your engine hatch up, make sure it's ventilated, look in there. You don't see any oil leaks or, or anything like that. Sure. Any, any through hauls right. are leaking. And then the same thing with this whaler. Yep. We've got our down in our little mechanic room down in here. So we've got access to the batteries. Yep. We've got a float switch on a bilge pump right down here that's all integrated together. Mm -hmm. That's 1,100 gallons an hour that, that water's going to pump out of there. Um, it's an automatic float. Check your automatic float switches. It's real easy. So I lay down here. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little knob right here. Twist it. And then, boop, there you go. So you can hear it kick on at the vibration. So you know that the auto float switch is working on there. Right. We can flip it on manually at the helm, but that's important. Um, you got seacocks in here for the live well pickups. Go ahead and open and close these so you make sure that they're in good working order. If you've got a yacht or a sport yacht, you're going to have seacocks and through hauls for your air conditioner, for your generator, maybe a sea keeper, uh, the head. You want to exercise all those. If they've been sitting for six months or yep. so and they haven't been moved, get in there and move those things around to where uh, you know you can shot them if you need to. Well, um, and Keith, I think we should tell the people also that we've been doing the boating tip series of videos where a lot of these different types of things have been discussed and, and continually will be discussed um, on how to keep your boat in, in order, working right. order. I mean, there's a, there's a whole library out there. If you go to Marine Max Boating Tips, then I don't know, there's probably 30 or 40 of them out yeah, there right Yeah, we have now. a ton. And uh, you can check those out at marinemax.com, also on YouTube. Um, and we post a couple things on Instagram and Facebook as well. So so stay tuned to those. Uh, so Keith. Sir. Let's talk safety. Okay. Uh, I know you have some stuff up front. Right, we uh, have the some stuff with us. Um, and uh, let's kind of talk about some of the safety things. And I think Lisa will kind of. Uh, I can be our Vanna White if you'd like. <laughs> there you go. Obviously. 
life jackets. Want to make sure we have a couple of life jackets. Um, what are we looking for to make sure that you know I'm I'm Coast Guard compliant and I'm all good to go with my life jacket? All right. So a couple. If we had a couple on here right now, we'd be in trouble. So we need we got four. So yes. Make sure you got one for everybody on board the boat. Okay. Um, the jackets go through and check the stitching out. Make sure there's no holes, no tears, or anything like that in here. If it is, it's no good. Just pitch it. Um, it might have been sitting down in a, in a locker or something over the winter. Might have got water. If that thing's waterlogged or, or just nasty, pitch it out, get rid of it, get yourself a new one. They're cheap enough. Make sure it's in good working order. You'll wear it. It's going to save your life. Okay. And then we got a couple of different flotation devices right. here. So this one. the throwable is the type four you're required to have one of these on your boat same thing just go through make sure it's in good working order make sure it's nice and neat and everything's you know there's no holes or or anything in it all right and then i remember this you one remember this? <laughs> yeah that's probably one of the most popular videos oh yeah so. where we put this on i'm a pro here get this guy on. this will be a refresher all right go ahead let her rip All right, it seems to be in good working order to me. All right, so that's a pair That's a pair of suspenders, okay? They are not a personal flotation device unless you're actually wearing it, okay? So you have to have it on in order for it to count. Now, one other thing, the manufacturer of these are all gonna be a little different, but this particular one, they're gonna ask you that annually, you go ahead and pull this cord, which pops this CO2 cartridge right here, so all she did was when she did that, it poked a hole in here. So all the gas from this canister went inside the, the PFD. Then make sure, just take it off, let it sit for 24 hours so that you know it's holding the compressed gas. Last thing you want to do to rely on that, maybe this thing's got a tear or a puncture we don't know about, right? And then it comes the day you have to use it, and the air all is going out. So once a year go ahead and do it gives you an excuse to jump in the swimming pool or do whatever and this one's got an automatic discharge if that gets submerged it'll go off on it automatically automatically yep. good to know okay. all right and i know we've got um aside oh, from of one, course one, one other little thing too kids jackets kids pfds so it's been a long winter maybe for you little tommy or susie might have grown up might have put on five ten pounds or whatever a little bit taller so this one's an infant up to 50 pounds i believe um yep less than 50. so make sure you've got the appropriate size pfd for your kids right put them on them let them get used to it let them swim around with them let them play with them so if they do end up in the water i mean they're going to be used to wearing them on the boat but let them know what it feels like to be in the water with them too that's okay. a good point so I got a question from behind the camera here. Shoot. So um, I know boating is one of the most, you know, family, friends, out on the water, fun in the sun. So the sun, obviously, you know, a lot of issues when it comes to that and, and health and safety. So could you talk a little bit about sunscreen and, the, and the, how important it is to use proper sunscreen? Sure. I should probably use more of it. Um, uh, sunscreen get a good sunscreen uh, you know probably the Paba free or what I mean just you know good healthy one for you that's you're not gonna plug up pores um, check the expiration dates on them yep. a lot of times they sit for a while and then you put it on and who knows I mean it might even exacerbate the problem it might even make it worse you know um, yep, I mean I don't know I'm not a doctor but make sure that you know just like the food you're eating check the expiration date same thing on the things yep. um, and expiration dates segue segue very nice if you haven't Flares. changed your flares in three years, they're expired. Okay, oh. manufacture date on here and expiration date. So make sure you check that. Same thing, if the boat's been sitting a while, it might have gotten wet, might get soggy, whatever, make sure they're in good operating order. Uh, just a quick review once again, you pop the black cap off the top, exposes a piece of sandpaper. Here's my plastic cartridge or plastic cap on the top, it pulls off. Here's basically a matchstick. There's the side of my box of matches. You'll strike it on there. It'll start going. Hold it in the white part. Right. Downwind and over the water because you don't have the slag dripping on here. Right. So what but do you do with expired flares? Expired flares, I just recommend everybody take them to the local fire department. Um, 
drop them off there. The guys can use them in their pyrotechnic training and stuff like that. Let go. them go burn them up and smoke up a building or whatever and practice. All right. So. Um, Good. Flares. All right. And we got some more safety equipment over here. Speaking of flares. Flares. <laughs> Once we start the fire with a flare, we got to be able to put it out. So uh, fire extinguisher, needle, make sure it's in the green. Okay. Hot, cold, hot, cold, whatever. These things may end up accidentally somehow discharging. The needle's in the green, you're good. Once it drops down on the red, pitch it out, get yourself a new one. Also, just a uh, little FYI, Kitty, this is a Kitty fire extinguisher. Kitty had a national recall. So, on your, if you have a Kitty fire extinguisher, go to Kitty's website, and there's gonna be a serial number on here. Type that serial number into their website. If it's one of the ones that's been recalled, they will send you a brand new one, no charge. You just take yours, put it back in the box, and mail it back. I don't care. I mean, it could be on your boat. This might be underneath your sink in your kitchen. It could be out in your garage, wherever. But just check your fire extinguishers, guys. If it's Kitty, type in the serial number, and you know they'll, so they'll, they'll is, hook you up. So now, is this a one. special marine grade fire yeah, this extinguisher? Yeah, this is a B. Some... This is actually this is a. Let's see what is this ABC. So this will do them all. Okay. So whether it's uh, you know trash, liquids, and electrical, so is that it's, just a, the, it's a dry chemical. So you shoot it, and it's gonna it just smothers the fire. Fire. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good. And continuing. Oh, do we have a question from the field? Um, any we questions? do not have any questions, but we do have Tommy, Vinny, Rochelle, and Bonnie tuning in right now. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And if you do have questions, or you know what, if you work for Marine Max and we've missed anything that we should cover, drop them in the notes below and we'll make sure to cover it. We'll answer your questions. Um, I know we've got some uh, radio equipment over here we're going to touch on. Just, just real briefly, just same thing, right? The Kind of the whole theme to this. Just check your gear before you go. Uh, if yeah. you got a VHF radio, this is a handheld radio, obviously. You know, plug it in ahead of time. Make sure it charges up. Make sure it holds a charge. Uh, go through and, you know, make sure you can pick up. Uh, For the following marine location, you know, coastal it's waters working. We've got our weather, weather forecast going on here. So, um, so just check that. And same thing if you've got an EPIRB or a personal locator beacon or anything like that once again you know there's a shelf life in them you know the lithium batteries are only good for so long so just you know check your paperwork you know when you bought it or what the, the lifetime expiration is on it you just want you just want stuff to work when you need it to work so yes. there's no better time than to just check ahead of time you know so take your time go through the boats before you hop in and then head out this weekend or this week or whenever the weather breaks for you, I guess they're getting another big snowstorm in the Midwest this oh, this week. So <laughs> it'll be gone well, soon. So, no. Yeah, it's sunny in Florida, that's for sure. That's and for if, sure. If you're a Marine Max customer and you're looking for something to do, you can always check out MarineMax.com/events. Uh, we've got locations across the country, and I know everyone is gearing up for summer getaways. Um, I know there's some boat shows coming up. Um, so definitely take a look and and reach out to your local store it, to see what's going on. So Keith, I got another question for you. So what are some of the main questions you get, you know, about people when they get out on the waterways and they're just trying to enjoy themselves, but things that they need to know while they're out on the water to, to do it safely? You know, how to navigate, how to, how to get from place to place safely? Um, well, I, you know, go back, make sure your, your charts are updated. Having, if you're in the intercoastal waterway, you know, having an understanding for you know how the intercoastal markers work so it's like a it's a roadway it's a Channel navigated markers. you know a, a, a maintained passageway for you to run um, if you've got your chart plotter with you you want to ski or tube and do all that stuff you'll be able to see the deeper pockets and the deeper areas yep. like we're out here on Tampa Bay right now right I mean there is I've got the Bayside Bridge here and then way on the horizon about eight miles away you can see the tall buildings of downtown Tampa so there isn't a channel marker between here and there, right? So once again, it's either local knowledge or relying on your chart to know, hey, there's a little shallow shoal area over here and this one over here to, you know, to be able to go. And up here right now, the, you know, the waters, you know, up here in Tampa Bay, it's not real clear. Now, if you're out down by Anna Maria or out on the Gulf or the Atlantic, the Keys, the Bahamas, I mean, that water's crystal clear. And once again, you can see kind of, you know, the 
shallower water, but then a lot of times, you know, you're in 20 foot of water and it looks like it's two foot. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's crazy. Right. Um, we did have a comment from one of our team members, Anthony Armeo, who <laughs> said, always check the anchor rope if the boat has been sitting for a while, especially if you have a windlass or for kids safety. Anthony, how'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> he so, might do some fishing. Maybe. So the so the plan, this is, this is all honesty right here, right? We were going to come out, drop the anchor out here in a little uh, less windy area. So we come out. I thought the boat had a windlass. Eh, doesn't. I go up, open the anchor hatch, no anchor. So check make sure you got an anchor before you go boating <laughs> too. So you'd end up being like us, sitting out here drifting around. Um, and Anthony also, always take fishing rods when you head out. If you could tell us just a little bit about this uh, 230, I mean... What, what are some of the advantages of a boat like this? I mean, Boston Whaler, definitely known for, you know, being a fishing brand, they're, they're fishing focused, but at the same time, this is like it's a tank. pleasure boat. It's, there's tons of room. The boat's solid, foam filled. I mean, it's, we go out and hit wakes. There's no creak, there's no rattle, there's no groan, there's nothing to it. It's the most solid boat made. Um, it's the safest boat Boston Whaler makes. Um, that's why a lot of the military, you know, uses sure. them and stuff too. This uh, model right but here? This, not this particular model, but just whalers but just whalers in general? In general? Wow. Yeah. Um, the hard top up here, I mean, you've got so much shade, but then, I mean, there's just a lot to, to hang on to. Yeah, definitely. Um, this particular bottle, being the 23, it's a great all-around family boat. You've got huge storage underneath where you're sitting, Kelly. There's mm -hmm. storage under here. And then, we step back here for just a second, if we open... So this seat right here, if I put it up right here, then it's a leaning post. So a lot of times people may not want to sit when they're riding along, right? Yep. So your, your buddy can stand here. That's perfect. But then we open this, open this, and there I've got a live well built in inside this seat. Wow. If I want to have a forward facing lounger, that'll go like that. This will go all the way down, okay, so you can lay back that way, so or, I'd say or we, can, we can lay the whole thing down like that. Versatility is key when it comes to boating, and this, this boat definitely Absolutely. has a lot of versatility. I mean, the back seat. Wow. I, I dare anybody, go try to find freaking stainless steel hardware Yep. like that. I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a beast of a boat. And so, so some of the classes that you guys do, I know Women on Water we were talking about earlier today. Um, so Women on Water, tell us a little bit about what happens uh, during your classes so people get a little bit better understanding. So the Women on Water classes, you saw a little bit just from a distance. Uh, we kind of set up uh, the tables and uh, go through safety gear, kind of just like what we did here a little bit. But then we'll tie lines on cleats. We'll teach you how to tie a bowline. We go through the channel markers, the rules of the road, the light characteristics that the light channel markers are flashing and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. kind of if you're running back in without any kind of electronics, at least if you have a paper chart, every one of the ladies, I guarantee you after 10 minutes of doing that today, can sit down and look at a chart and know what a safe watermark is, know what a preferred channel marker looks like, yep. knows how the lights flash and pop on them. There's no doubt in my mind that they can get the boat back home or back to the marina or whatever just even at nighttime just by looking at a chart um, then we'll kind of break up into groups we use this boat today we also had a 27 Vantage mm -hmm. out here which is the big brother to this one and uh, everybody gets in behind the helm everybody runs the boat we come back in we'll go in there practice docking tight quarters maneuvering the old shift and turn which you know we've, we've all done and, and talked about in some of the other yep. other videos yep. and stuff like that but uh, it just gets, you know, gets all the ladies a chance behind the helm. Then they go home and they can hop on their boat and kind sure. of practice what they learned. Well, if you guys are interested, or I should say you ladies are interested in signing up for one of the Women on Water classes, be sure to check out marinemax.com where you can find out updates on events and Women on Water classes. Uh, obviously, stop by your local store or, you know, give Captain Keith a call. I'm sure you guys can discuss <laughs> dates and times and, uh, and get you guys set up. I keep saying guys, but... <laughs> ladies, <laughs> yeah, ladies, ladies. Cool. Well, are there any other questions? Let's see. Um, no, not at this time, but we do have Jim tuning in with us as well. Hey, and um, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Jeff and Jim, how are you doing? <laughs> they are more, they are 
but ready to get on the water. That's what they are. For sure. We've got a great checklist here. And of course, um, as, as Keith and Kelly mentioned, boating tips videos. Keith has done a ton of them. So if you're interested in more in-depth information about anything we covered today, mm -hmm. hit up uh, the YouTube channel and look for Keith's boating tip videos. Yeah, we have a ton of great content. Anything you could possibly think about, you know, that you want to learn about in terms of boating knowledge, boating safety, um, all on there. And we're doing a really cool special with Ray Marine right now. So check out those videos. Awesome. If there aren't any other questions, be sure to leave your questions and comments even after this video and uh, we'll, we'll be sure to, to get back to you about any questions you may have with answers and uh, Keith, it's been a blast today. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Nice afternoon. Yeah, cool. it's beautiful. Well, let's hit the water. I mean, we're already out here, but let's, uh, let's go find let's a Let's get you right back behind the helm here. Let's go. <laughs>